I think the police should look more into finding a body than try to interrogate the last person who saw her alive, who clearly left the scene. Oh. Hello. Hi, this is 911, okay? Coming, are you coming? Yeah, well, I got some help there. How long ago did this happen? I had a jump out of the car. Uh, how long ago did this happen? Three, two minutes ago, I ran. I oh. should have run to the house. I'm in so much pain. People go missing. But how often do we have kidnappings where the victims are found? In this case, 35-year-old basketball coach Rebecca is found at a roadside, but unfortunately dies before help arrives. Corner of uh, Riley Thompson and Automobile. We come up to this lady, she's laying in the road. I think she was hit by a car. Okay, is she breathing? She is breathing, she, she's got a head injury, and she's laying face down. From the investigations, it is discovered that Rebecca's fate was premeditated, as police make some findings at the scene of the incident. What's the probability of a murder and a kidnapping in two neighboring towns being connected? Who could have wanted these ladies gone? Rebecca had been shot three times in the head, and two of those shots appeared to be at, from close range. These were some of the thoughts running through the minds of detectives when the disappearance of a young woman is reported. We had a young lady named Jessica Herringa who was a gas station attendant, and essentially she just disappeared from work. The potential of them being related was in the back of our mind. As investigations continue, we get very useful information. A witness at the scene of the incident recounts what she sees. And she saw a van go behind a store turn off its lights, she found it suspicious. So she turned around and came back. She saw a male subject shuffle something and shut back hatch, get into the van, and then leave. Is there a missing link between Rebecca's death and Jessica's disappearance? What does the perpetrator want? Why does he do it? It's been three years, and there's no headway still. But a 911 call at 8 a.m. is the ray of sunshine needed in the investigations. <laughs> Hello. Hi, this is 911, okay? Are you guys coming? Are you coming? Yeah, well, I got some help there. How long ago did this happen? I had a jump out of the car. Uh, how long ago did this happen? Three, two minutes ago, I ran. I had to run to the house. I'm in so much pain. Another kidnapping. Is it the same person? Same car? Same man? What are the odds that the person wanted for Rebecca's murder and Jessica's kidnapping is now responsible for Madison's abduction as well? We can only keep our fingers crossed in high hopes. Having no criminal record clears you of suspicion. Well, there's always a first time. Our suspect is identified, thus narrowing down our search. Well, is his car and home are combed for evidence of the crimes. Voila. The police uncover evidence that answers questions about when Rebecca was murdered and Jessica kidnapped. There is always a consequence for every action. Murders, kidnapping, reckless driving, or violence. There will always be consequences, and Jeffrey Willis is no exception, as he gets cross-examined. A flame, a mutual attraction, and a rejection. Is this enough reason to go off-grid? Later that morning, I'm at work, and I get a text from Carrie that says, can we move in together? Now, that was extremely left field, because after dating for two weeks, Carrie made it very clear to me that if we have a relationship, it's nothing serious. Carrie Farver goes out of sight, but never out of mind. She is nowhere to be found, but yet her presence hovers around. Incessant texts from Carrie, her disappearance, and the return of an ex-girlfriend. Could there be a link to these three, or do we just play it off as great timing? Only time will tell. Carrie is now sought after by two groups, a group concerned about her well-being, and another, desiring that she brought to book but she has to be found for justice to take its course, right? 
It sure does not get any weirder than this. A stalker. This would send shivers down the spine of anyone. All of a sudden, Nancy was getting these strange texts from Carrie. So Nancy texted back, you need to call. I need to hear your voice. With no progress made but a series of incidents and threats, the police were left with no choice but to consider the options in solving the pending case of harassment against Dave. Well, well, what do we say about scorned women? Hell hath no fury like one. There is a spotlight on Liz, the threat she has been receiving, and a new turn of events. The final puzzle piece, and unanswered questions get answered. We have our killer. When I went to her room, I noticed that her nightstand was up against her door. So I kind of pushed it. The whole room was cold, and her window was open. Nicole wasn't there. Dates are a thing to look forward to, right? The thought of someone loving you and caring a lot about you makes you feel warm, doesn't it? Nicole is just like every teenage girl and is happy to have someone care about her. David Heinschauer, or better yet, Dr. Tombstone, is being interrogated, and there doesn't seem to be headway. He denies knowing the whereabouts of Nicole, but we can't take his word for it, right? In December, if I remember correctly, I was bored in my dorm room and logged on to a website where you go and you just talk to random strangers. It's an anonymous kind of, the website is called Omegle, if I believe correctly. Okay. And then she's like, hey, do you want to use my, or like message me on some app called Kick? No one admits to a crime at the first instance. Tombstone goes on to give a hint to the police line of investigation on Nicole's disappearance. This gives a lead on things to look out for in their investigation. Okay. So it's not going to be possible for us to believe that account of events. Following David's excuse of an alibi, the police make a discovery that leads to further investigations and a possible cracking of the mystery. I think the police should look more into finding a body than try to interrogate the last person who saw her alive, who clearly left the scene. It appears we are at the end of the case as Natalie makes a shocking confession. We know that you have information about this. What do you think was falling out of your phone? She was driving. Okay, where is she? Natalie, how much are you involved in this? Well, he to know. forced me to move, to help him move her body. Where was it? Albeit a sad one. Natalie recounts the moments and incidents leading up to Nicole's disappearance and her not-so-small role in the plan. And then she stabbed her. He killed her in the... in the woods. The next day, he told me that he needed help. Following we Natalie's claims, Nicole is found, and the police make some other findings. A non-admittance to the crime, a no-contest plea deal, and David's fate is decided. This, however, does not bring back Nicole, and Tammy is left to deal with the pain. 